the committee. <coughs> welcome you all very, very sincerely for being here today. Now, you know, we're here for the one reason, and the one reason only is to honour that man who said a supreme, supreme sacrifice that we might be here today. I think there's very few of us real, realise that, but that has happened. I know it's not the be all and end all of what they set out to achieve, but they've got the next best thing. But any of us, or woman for that matter, with any red blood in them, would say, as, as the 32 county republic we want, and not less. So please God in time, that it will happen. But anyway, these are very, very welcome. People have travelled journeys and all, and you're very, very welcome, no matter where you came from. And we're here, as I said, to honour this man, and also his comrades, Patrick Moore and Ross Common, Thomas Field in Galway, Patrick Dyer Dublin, Bernard Ryan Dublin, Thomas Bryan Dublin, Edmund Pauley Limerick, Patrick Maher Limerick, Frank Flood Dublin, Thomas Trainer Dublin, and our own, just up the road where he was in Combay, Kevin Barry. So our first little item on the program is the reading of the proclamation by J.J. Dory, son of Joe Dory, who was one of our staunch support for years. So J.J., please, you might read the proclamation. Proclamation of Public Nahir, original government of the Irish Republic, to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and the dead generations in which you receive the old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, both, summons her children to one flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment, and supported by her exiled children in America, and by gallant allies in Europe, who are relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland, to the ownership of Ireland, and to the unfettered control of the Irish destinies, to be sovereign and indivisible. The long usurpation of that right by foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished, except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted the right to national freedom and justice. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state, and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, encouraging all the children of the nation equally, and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government, which has divided the minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all our men and women, the provisional government, hereby constituted, will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic and trust in the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the August destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the provisional government, Thomas J. Clark, John McEverdell, Thomas MacDonald, Laurie Pierce, M. Dan, James Connolly, and Joseph Lumpet. Here today, with this, thank God, we have a couple of the granddaughters of Thomas Trainer, and uh, a special honour for us, for me, on behalf of the people of the town, our committee, to, to welcome Mrs. Winnie Murray, 
the eldest granddaughter of Thomas Trainer, who, along with Leanne de Reed, she will now present me on behalf of the people of the town and the museum in Tulla, the, the flag that covered Thomas Trainer's coffin the day they were reinterred in Glass Nevin. So, Mrs. Morley, please. It's an honour just to have this bag in my hand. I say that I covered it the coffin of Tom Trainer, one of her own, or very own, from Tullard, who played the supreme sacrifice of giving his life for his country. I believe you may, it's an honour that I'm nearly shaken here with joy and enjoyment of that flag. It means a lot to us, and on behalf of the people of the town and our committee, and I'm here to her, Mrs. Murray and your family, and the people from Dublin, thank you very, very much for this honour. Uh, before the short oration by Ronnie, uh, we now have the ballad Thomas Trainer, if I can remember, can remember the word. Now, when we listen to the ballad, I, I think it covers the, his nine comrades that died at the same time with them. The words are bit different, the show the ballad of Tom Trainer, but it, it covers all the forgotten ten, every one of them. You can take them in it when I'm singing this song, this ballad. It was early, early on a Monday morning, as the birds all sang at the flush of dawn. On a Monday morning, on the gallows high, brave Thomas Trainer who was led forth to die, led forth to die in his manhood prime. No flag did flutter, no bell did chime, but the road is spoken came sweet and clear from the people all gathered round the jail gate near. Yet my loving wife neither weep nor sigh, for Ireland's sake I am proud to die, I am proud to die, though my children dear, a father's voice never more shall hear. Like music soft on the morning air, the people's voice rises in murmured prayer. The boat is drawn tight, the fatal cord, Tom Trainer's soul is now safe with God. The sacrifice for his land is made. In the prison grounds is his body laid. With the sainted martyrs of liberty, who died on Ireland, might soon be free. <laughs> <laughs> 